Hello, true crimeers. It is time for three minutes of true crime, and this is the case of Natasha Ashley. Viewer discretion is advised. Natasha Ashley was a 19-year-old girl, and she was just a few weeks shy of turning 20. Uh, she had graduated high school a couple of years prior, and she was um, her first year into college. She was described as a young woman who absolutely enjoyed life, but she was also uh, a no-nonsense type person. Um, she even told a friend that she goes, you know what, I think I'm going to probably die when I'm young. And it's because she had such a, a big personality and she didn't really take shit from anyone. Um, so yeah, she was just, she was very strong-minded. She was described as like being really wild and really fun, um, but also really smart. She had lived in Livingston, Texas for most of her life, but by her senior year in high school, she, she moved with her grandma in Odessa, Texas, and that's where she finished school. Um, and then after that, she went to um, college in Texas. On the night of May 2nd, 1992, Natasha just wanted to go out and have some fun and go to a party that was going on at a nearby friend's house. The party went on here in this house, and it, by all accounts, it was pretty wild. A um, whole lot of uh, drinking, um, there was rumors of drugs, uh, LSD, that kind of thing um, going on. Um, but at some point, uh, late, late, late in the evening, possibly in the very, very early morning hours, um, Natasha had decided to leave. But she never made it home, um, and she was reported missing very quickly. At about 10 o'clock in the morning on May 3rd, 1992, uh, two people who had been walking noticed a little Camaro on the side of the road and there was fire and smoke billowing out of it. When police arrived and the fire was put out, they noticed in the trunk was a body, um, but it had nearly been charred to skeletal remains. That body would eventually be identified through dental records as belonging to 19-year-old Natasha Ashley. Her body, uh, like I said, was basically down to a skeleton, um, and they really couldn't determine her cause of death. I'm assuming there was no uh, gunshots, uh, because you would still be able to see that likely through her bones, So, but they never determined her actual cause of death other than it was a homicide. They would determine that the accelerant used to set the car on fire was something called drip gas, which apparently is something um, that you can get through, I guess, an oil refinery, which they had plenty of them out there. Um, but they said it would take someone very skilled and someone who really knows what they're doing to actually get drip gas. Um, so that would eventually possibly help narrow down the suspects. The only problem is there is no suspects. There's There's been no one. They did arrest a couple of uh, young guys before who were at the party the night before. Apparently some fight had broken out um, and another witness came forward to say that they saw these two men like punching and beating up on Natasha. But then later that individual, that witness would basically recant his entire statement and he said he lied because he was actually on LSD that night. And now that man is in prison for uh, the sexual assault of a child. So his word is not very great. The amount of people who were at the party, it was a large party. And so that made it nearly impossible to truly question every single person um, because they didn't know everyone who was there because not everyone came forward who was at the party. That being said, the sheriff's department said they believe they spoke to the person who killed Natasha um, because they believe it was someone who attended that party. But figuring out who that person actually is has been quite hard. <laughs> Sadly, her case would go cold. I mean, because the car was, was burnt to an absolute crisp, her body was burned to skeletal remains. There was no evidence. There was no physical evidence. They don't believe that that was the crime scene where she was actually killed. She was likely driven there in her car and then after she was dead and the car set on fire so they've never found the actual crime scene they've never found there's no fingerprints there's no foreign dna there's nothing they have absolutely nothing so right now police and the sheriff's department they're they're truly hinging all of this on someone coming forward with information someone who could provide what happened um 
So if that person is you, or if you know someone who knows something, you can call anonymously. You can call 1-800-252-8477. And again, you can report it anonymously if you know anything. You can also submit a tip through the Texas Rangers Cold Case website. There is currently a $15,000 reward being offered to anyone who could provide any tips that would lead to an arrest. But that is it for today, folks. So I will be back with another longer video um, tomorrow. So in the meantime, ta-ta for now, true crime-aroonies.